Hey, stop! Estoy grabando. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this morning's edition of the Trick Podcast of Joy. How are you guys? I hope that you're doing awesome on this beautiful morning. It's Friday, Friday, as we like to say here in Gozolandia. Welcome to the program Vida Gozo with Trig, your host, talking today about a very, very important topic, and that's how to make an extra thousand dollars a month using online tools. Online tools are very important. We're going to get into that. But before we get into that, if you're watching me anywhere but on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, come over to YouTube. That's where all the goodies are. That's where the punch and cookies are. That's where you can join the conversation. But regardless of where you are, even if you're on Facebook, Twitch, wherever, welcome Periscope. Welcome. You can leave me a comment and it'll show up in this box right here to my right. And you will be, your name will be in the light. So thank you so much for coming and joining us. I was uh, t listening this morning to a podcast by a man, I forget his name, I think he's something Cruz. He's a businessman from Mexico, and he was born, I think, here in the local, in the area here locally. And he's on this podcast talking about how if you are down and out, you can't help another person who's down and out. <laughs> Does that make sense, right? I talk about this a lot in church, you know, like people are always asking for money, right? I mean, you're always, as a leader, churches are always asking for, for donations. But if you're asking broke people for donations, they can't give the church anything. And so what I like to do as a, a spiritual leader, it's not just simply ask for money or even just help people. Obviously, these are all important things, but to help them make money themselves, to have a second business. You know, obviously we all have our, our jobs. We work in construction. You work taking care of kids. You go to school. You're trying to do all these things. But how do you, as a young person, let's say, help your parents buy that dream house? You know, that's what you want to do. But how do you do that? Well, I'm convinced that if you are a business-minded person, that using the tools of the day, which are these online tools, is an incredible way to go and you know just because you are let's say someone who's working a nine to five and you make whatever you know twenty thirty forty thousand dollars or maybe less maybe more it doesn't mean that you can create other ways or other streams of income in fact i mean who's to know that my job will be there next month you know i work at a church who's to know that your job will be there next month you know the economy and things and politics Everything can change, and so it's important that you and I find alternative ways, especially through technology, where we can begin to build a second income stream so that we can help our, our abuelitas back home, so that you can buy your house for your mom back in Mexico and Salvador or, or in Colombia. And so these are the things that, we, that really matter to us. And my daughter and I, as you know, we have a business called Trig Media, and so we, even this morning, I had a guy come by to build me a fence. And as he was leaving, I said, hey, by the way, Jim, my daughter and I have a media company. If you want to put just all your content online, how you make beautiful fences and how neighbors are so happy. And if you want to increase your reach, get more customers, get more business, maybe make an extra thousand dollars a month, we can help you. And he was like, wow, really? It was really an amazing moment. And so how can you do the same, you know, through your skills? How do you use your own knowledge to create a business that is a, a side hustle, as they call it, right? Or a kind of a, something on the side that can generate extra income. Maybe you're the wife and you're at home, you're helping at church, you volunteer, you do all these things for your kids. But you're very creative. You, you love to build things with your hands. You love to put up decorations or you love to, to write or to sing. And you think, well, as long as, you know, uh, my husband makes money, I guess I'll be okay. But what if you could build your own business through your crafts or through your writing 
It might be that your business is more hands-on. It's not media, nor is it, I don't know, something with your hands, but maybe you take care of kids or you sell a clothes. What if you were to use online tools to actually spread your spread your, your message and not have to drive around all over town and your kids are in the car, you have to rush to go pick them up and you're sweating and you know maybe the guys are, are being mean to you or you don't know how to speak English, the language, or maybe you feel shy going up to people. How can you use online tools to spread your message and actually create the kind of income that you need so that you can help your mom, help your parents build that house for your for your mom back home. You know, that's what I want to talk about today. And so I have a training here in the next slide that I want to show you that will hopefully help many of us to get a good sense of, of kind of what to do and how to do this. And I can't wait to actually go through these tools here with you. So here we go. So the number one thing I want to tell you is that media is an amazing way to get your message across. And that's my beautiful daughter, Canela. Her and I, we have this company, as I said, called Trig Media. And I want to describe to you how media can help you get your message across. Number one is podcasts is a great way to create deep relationships. You may not know what a podcast is, especially us Latinos. We sometimes are only on YouTube, or not even on YouTube, only on Facebook, right? Most Latinos are only on Facebook. They're not even on Instagram. They're not listening to podcasts. They're not doing YouTube. And so that's fine. You can use podcasts even on Facebook. You know, you can just can just you can just create a link back to your website, back to your to your podcast. Now, what is a podcast and what does this mean deep relationships? Well, a podcast is basically audio. Think of it this way. When I was a little boy, I remember I would get up and my grandma was always ironing my shirts. And next to her her ironing board, la plancha y el planchador, there was this there was her radio. And she would always listen to the radio in the morning, to uh, el, el, la, Las Noticias, and to the Las Novelas, and to uh, funny people on, on the radio. And that noise was just there all day long, all day long. My mom, as I've said this many times, when she's here visiting, she has the radio on all the time. She doesn't listen to novelas, she listens to Christian programming, to preachers and, and hymns and, and worship songs. But the point is that that radio is on all day long. It's like a, like a comforting sound, like something in the background that just makes us feel at home. That's what a podcast is. It's the same exact idea. You can record one hour, three hours. There's some podcasts that are a whole day of podcasts just so that people can listen to it all day long, even as they sleep. There are these podcasts that are what they call just lo-fi, chill music that you can listen to while you go to sleep. There are some that people get on there and they teach more. You know, they're more education driven or maybe they're, uh, they're teaching a certain uh, concept. Uh, they're, they're more educational. Other podcasts are, are spiritual, of course. They teach lessons online, biblical lessons. And they do it through audio. Now, the great thing about audio is that it's quick. You don't have to put on your makeup or get dressed up or anything. It's just your voice. And most of all, as I said, people can listen to it for a long time. And it creates this relationship of comfort. It creates this rapport with that person. You're like, oh, I just love hearing her voice. I just love hearing the, the noise in the background. It makes me feel at peace and it creates a deep relationship. And then that, of course, evolves into you being able to provide services for that person. Now, video, on the other hand, is even more powerful, even though it is more difficult, it is more powerful. And I would say, especially if you use it to entertain and to educate. I mean, everyone loves video, right? I mean, just think of video as watching TV. It's the same exact thing. You're like, oh, I don't know about video. I don't know how I look. Just think about video as TV. What are your favorite TV shows? Well, when I was young, I liked Three's Company. I liked La Novelas. I liked Friends. And now when people are on video, yeah, they're beautiful, of course, you know, and that's always the rub, and not everyone looks like my beautiful daughters and my lovely wife, right? No, no, I know I don't, but I'm here 
mostly to educate you, right? Sometimes I'll wear my silly hat and my gozo bell, and that's to entertain you. Educate, entertain. Like some people call it entercation or edutainment, combining those two words. My guess, especially if you're a Latino like me, you are funny. You have a fun streak in you, right? All of us Latinos are just people of color. We all have a fun streak, whether you are African-American or Nigerian or Latino, wherever you may be or from the Caribbean, we all have this fun streak to us. And video is an amazing, amazing way to entertain people and to educate people. So that's the power of video. Now, let's talk specifically about five ways to use media to make an extra thousand dollars a month. Number one is teach what you know. There's my, my new look that I got that day and my uh, handsome face, <laughs> my glasses that I got. But I wanna tell you something, teach what you know. People always say, Trig, but I don't know what to say. I don't really, I'm not very eloquent. I don't, I'm afraid of the camera. I'm afraid to even speak into a microphone. That's totally understandable. In, in fact, I was the same way. And I still feel nervous most of the time when I'm on these shows. I, I still wonder, okay, am I good enough and all that stuff. You have to get rid of that and keep going. And as far as the content, people say, well, what am I going to talk about? Teach what you know. I love media. I love music. I love teaching. That's what I'm doing here, teaching you what I know. So back to, let's say, if you're a guy who loves construction, you know, all construction guys, they do something on the side. And imagine if you had someone with a camera, with a phone, super simple, just simply documenting what you know. So instead of you just simply talking to the customer about his, his kitchen or about he's going to maybe replace the tile in his bathroom or her bathroom, what if you had someone just film you interacting with the, with the customer and then on the way out, when you're going to the car, you're already thinking about what to do. Imagine at that moment you turn to the camera and you simply talk to the camera and you say, hey, oops, sorry about that. Hey, here's what I'm going to do next. So let's say you're a woman and you love uh, crafts. Well, before you actually make all this stuff, right? Let's say you're building a nice um, something for the wall, okay? Some sort of ornament. My guess is that I'm not a crafts person, but my guess is that you have to go to the store and you have to pick out the ingredients and the beads and the, the branches and whatever it is that you're building. You have to know where to go, how much things cost. There's a whole set of skills and of steps that you have to take before you can build that beautiful wreath. Well, imagine someone coming alongside of you, your daughter, your son, your friend, even you, and you just hold up that camera, that phone, and you document and you talk about why you're going to the store, why you are doing, why you're buying this certain color. The point here is teach what you know. You don't have to be a news anchor. This is not CNN. This is not, I don't know, the Kardashians. You don't have to be at that level of perfection. You simply teach what you know and you are on your way. Number two is do videos of your everyday life. It's very similar to what I just said, but now we're talking more specific about everyday documentation. So, you know, every day there's something in my life that is interesting. Most of the time, what I do, like I'm sure it is for you, is just regular stuff, right? Boring, kind of just regular mundane stuff. You're sitting at home, you're going to work, you're running around, the kids, blah, 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 making dinner. Well, try to document that one 20-minute moment when you are doing something that is so unique to you. So, for example, for me, this is very unique to me, doing this show. I often will put a phone next to me, just re just recording me doing this because people are like, oh, that's what he does. That's what it looks like. Another thing that I love to do that's unique to me is I love to study for my sermon on Sundays and write and write and write. So sometimes I'll just take a picture of just me writing because it's very unique to me and people like to see the behind the scenes of things. Do that for you. Not everything in our lives is exciting. You're not trying to, like I said, be the Kardashians. But do simple videos of your everyday life that is unique to you, that not everyone does. 
things that are not that are not common to everyone because i mean when i look at people i think wow i wonder how they did that like for example for my lovely wife who you see here she's a, she's a vice principal at a school and sometimes she goes to other schools to observe how other principals and administrators do their job i would love to be a, a, a fly on the wall and see what she sees and maybe even get a glimpse if i was an educator this would be get a glimpse of their conversation in the car. What do they talk about after they went and observed this school? How do they process the information? As a leader myself, I would love to know kind of what she's seeing through her eyes. That's the power of video. Number three is document your life, not your wins. It goes back to what I just said. A lot of people think, well, my life is boring. You know, I don't do anything great. I, I don't have a lot of money. I don't look like the Kardashians. I don't... It's not like I'm really even good on camera or blah, blah, blah. Document just, as I said, just your life, what's unique to you. Even if it's not a great win or, oh, here in my garage or here, here's my Lamborghini or in my case, oh, here's my church of 5,000. Even if you're just, like in my case, speaking to a small crowd or maybe you're doing something that is, quote, normal. As I said, there's something about your process that is unique. That is your life that I don't know about. Document your life. Document even the losses. It might be that, let's say in my case, I preach a sermon and I feel terrible. Nobody wants to talk about that, right? But people love to know even when you don't win at life. Imagine that you are starting a business and you're out there working hard hustling. But I don't know, let's say your, your car breaks down and you're doing Uber and your car breaks down. Imagine doing a quick video of you just simply saying, man, I can't believe this. And maybe you're at AutoZone picking out some things or you're at the shop and you're just, you know, you have the shop in the background. And you're saying, you know, here I am trying to start my Uber thing. And and look at this. My car's in the shop. I'm here at AutoZone picking out some parts or at the shop dropping 500 bucks. Man. You know, when we do that, everyone can relate to that because everyone has been in that same position as you and people will be drawn to you, especially as you document your life, not your wins. Number four, the secret to business is something that I just learned the other day, which is so, so maybe my weakest point. The secret to business is to get in front of people, more and more and more people. Here I am with my band, with my beautiful son and Joel and a couple of friends we play every month at different churches in the area. You know that the thing that I've realized about business or about any of these kind of entrepreneurial uh, adventures is that you eventually have to get in front of more and more people. Business is not just online. You have to actually talk to more and more people about your business. And if you're shy or if you don't like to talk to people, this will be hard. But you simply just connect with someone who doesn't mind talking to people could be your friend, your sister, your, your cousin, your, your kids. Someone who loves to just connect with people. Now, if you are more of an extrovert, like I tend to be more of an extrovert, I'll, I'll talk to a rock. Then you need to make sure that you're doing that consistently. 10, 20 people per day. Not per week, not per month, not per year. Per day. For example, as I said this morning, this guy came. He's looking at my fence, blah, blah, blah. Normally, I would be like, oh, okay, thank you. You know, here's how much it'll cost. Okay, can you start next week? Instead, I said, hey, by the way, Jim, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, thanks so much. I'll look into it. I'll check it out. A couple months ago, I was driving through a coffee shop here in the area, and I saw that this shop, you know, it was a little more old school, but they had some young people, hipsters, that were working at the, at the counter. I gave the car to the owner. I said, hey, have you ever considered doing a podcast or doing a video of your com of your coffee shop? Because that coffee shop, I think it's been around for like 100 years. So there's like some, there's some history to it. He said, no, I hadn't thought of that. Now, you're going to get rejected, right? Nine out of 10 times. That's sales. But if you're not getting in front of people, you're never going to grow your business. You have to eventually take all that knowledge and sell, quote, yourself, meaning you you be face to face with people so that people are interested in you most of all if they trust you they will trust your brand and your product and then number five is don't sell instead show happiness 
show love. <laughs> There's my beautiful wife. A few years ago, we were at this party, and uh, it was a VIP thing at a friend's house. And I love that picture. Just uh, we're so young and happy, and I just love uh, seeing my beautiful wife. They're looking so, so outstanding. But you know, when it comes to selling your your product, something I've learned from the best is don't sell. Don't say, "Hey, now buy my product." Eventually, yes, of course, you you want to close the deal, right? You want to have people sign up to buy your your good and your goods and services. But remember that what people want more than anything is happiness. They want to feel love. They want to be able to to sell something or to buy something that will help them feel happier, that will help them accomplish their dreams, to will help them feel like, wow, I, I can now love myself more. Whatever it is that you're selling, you have to make it into an experience for people. It's not just do this, do that, I'm going to talk to you and help you. You want people to feel like if they buy your product, that they're actually going to be different because of what you're giving them where they don't even feel like they're buying or paying for something instead they feel like they're giving you money they they are paying you that's how they feel that's how you want them to feel they're paying you to make them happy that they are so willing to say hey i'll give you whatever you need i just want to be happy i want to be able to buy my mom that house I want to be able to to give my kids the experience of buy, of 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 living in a home and having a Christmas morning in their own house in their own rooms. If you can do that for people, people will be more than happy to sign up for your product, for your training, for your workshop. Because all of us want to be happy. Just as I said, I was listening to his podcast and this guy was talking about business and Latinos and all this stuff. And the more that he talked, I kept thinking of my grandma. I kept thinking of how my grandma used to work so hard. She's passed away last, I think it's been 20 years now. And what an amazing woman she was, how she taught me everything that I know. And I thought, why would I not want to persevere? Yeah, sometimes my knee hurts and my gut hurts and, and I sometimes don't sleep very well. And, you know, things happen, right? I'm almost 50. I mean, it's, it's your, our bodies, right, begin to fall apart. But I think, you know, she went through so much. How can I not persevere? Yeah, take that pill, get up and go work out and persevere. Because my grandma, that's what she taught me how to do. Same thing for you, right? You have to eventually connect with something that's real for you. And you want to help people connect with that. And that's why I have my, my business. Because, you know, it'd be easy for me to just say, well, you know, whatever happens, happens. I'll just sort of be here and I, I hope that life is good and I know God is good so he'll take care of me of course he'll take care of us like I just said last night if he takes care of the birds that don't worry then how will he not take care of you so I'm not talking about worrying but I am talking about showing people the kind of life that they can have you know when when, when I put my stuff out here online I always remember as I said my grandma you need to connect with something in your life that is real I was listening to this other guy. He was talking about how he started, I think it was, he opened uh, those income tax things. You know how like people, especially Latinos, we love to open income tax businesses. He said he dropped out of school at 14. And then around that age, he saw his father get all these like, uh, what do you call those people that are, that want to, that want, you know, the creditors, is that what they call them? Calling their home or their apartment, whatever it was asking for their money all these collecting agencies collectors and he saw his dad cry i think just whatever in his room just worried about all these debts that he had and that's what basically moved this man to start his income tax business and then he did swap meets and now he owns banks in mexico now he's here in the states to spread his message of motivation to latinos and to people like me and you. And I want to do the same thing. When I think of my grandmother and all that she did for me, how can I just sit around and just go to work and just hope for the best? No way. I'm going to work hard at my church. I'm going to work hard at this business to get it out in front of people, mostly to help other people fulfill their dreams and to not just be in a job and, 
and just wait around till they get old and, and, and die with no money and not ever fulfilling their dreams and buying that house or, or helping their kids or buying their grandma a home back in Mexico or wherever it may be. We need to follow our dreams and be able to do whatever we need to do to have a, a great, a great successful time. Well, with that said, I want to just tell you that I love you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here on this beautiful day, and I will see you next time.